So what we've got here is just a straightforward camshaft end play check on the uh, 393 stroker. So I'll have a voiceover PowerPoint that'll talk about some of the specifics, including part number. <coughs> so what we've got is, is uh, comp cams, hydraulic roller camshaft, and we have a Ford Motorsport uh, timing sprocket. And you can see the, uh, that's also the Ford Motorsport single piece eccentric. So there's nothing special. There's no needle bearing or setup or anything like that. It's also a Ford Motorsport thrust plate. I'll give all the part numbers for that. So I see specifications for 351 Windsor camshaft end play as anywhere from four to eight thousandths. Uh, in the voiceover, I'll describe some of the uh, issues with too much or too little end play, but let's, uh, let's just go with the four or eight thousandths. Uh, what do we got set up here? No timing chain, no lifters, but the, uh, the timing sprocket bolt is torqued down to 45 foot-pounds, which is uh, correct for the ARP bolt I'm using. So I've got the camshaft all the way back in the engine, and uh, I have zeroed out the uh, dial indicator. So let's just take my uh, uh, masking tape protected uh, pry bar here and pry it out and see what we get. Okay, so I'm prying on it pretty hard here. So, pried on it as much as I want, so that's about four to four and a half thousandths, and I think that's acceptable for this installation. Okay, uh, take care and okay, talk let's soon. Let's talk a little about camshaft and play, how to check it, what are some of the problems and how to fix them, and we're especially going to focus on uh, distributor drive shaft gear wear, which end play has an effect on, but I think a lot of distributor drive shaft gear wear and gear failures are not related to end play or end play played a small portion. We've got dedicated slides on those. If you don't care about any of this, you can skip ahead and you can find what you want. Okay, I think we know what end play the definition is, but if put down put that down here. So this presentation focuses on hydraulic roller camshaft end play. I put some uh, words in here about flat tappet, how the cam, uh, cam lobes are ground with a slight angle or taper, and how that can uh, thrust the camshaft either forward or rear, depending on the design. Typically, small block Chevys and big block Chevys are rear thrust. So you wouldn't have a thrust plate required there. If you have forward thrust, you need a specifically designed thrust plate. Uh, we'll talk about taper, left mix taper next page. I did find some information that depending on the engine, stock small block Fords have eight lobes tapered in opposite direction, so you get this zero thrust from the lifters. I really don't think that applies at all aftermarket small block Ford cams and lifters, but I thought it's interesting. Now, roller camshafts have a zero taper load uh, lobe, which allows the cam to thrust forward. So we, we need a thrust control plate and we should check our end play. Now, some wise guy is going to say, you forgot to talk about the oil pump. Okay. Yes, the oil pump drive is a rear thrust reaction, but we typically don't take credit for that in the end play check. Okay. Here's some blogosphere pictures of uh, thrust plate wears and uh, let's get going. Okay, I'm not gonna read this word for word. If you look at my intro screen, there's a lot of source data that's hyperlinked. Here's the upshot for us Ford guys. If Trend Performance publishes something, these guys really know what they're talking about, especially with push rods and valve train geometry. Their tech and fact pages are excellent and they have good graphics and when you call trend performance, you're not necessarily just talking to a salesman like with most aftermarket suppliers. So uh, you can check out trends information hyperlink, but they say taper left, mix taper, pushes cam forward, just requires a cam thrust plate, just like roller tap it. So let's get going. Okay, so there are some common points of confusion and let's clear them up. 
Uh, number one, the camshaft lobes need to be centered in the lifter bore with the camshaft contacting the rear freeze plug. Honestly, this has confused me too, but it's really a elementary mistake. So people will install the camshaft. They'll put it in, they'll go to the uh, rear freeze plug, and they'll get their flashlight and look down and go, oh my God, the lobe's not centered. So uh, the rear freeze plug doesn't have anything to do with camshaft end play. Uh, if you do this, the lifter lobes will not be centered, meaning if you put the cam in there and you go back and touch the rear freeze plug and then look down, they're not going to be centered. They'll appear to be too far aft. <clears throat> That's until the camshaft thrust retainer plate and camshaft sprocket are torqued to spec. That'll bring the cam and, and lobes forward and it'll be centered uh, it'll, the lobe will be centered in the lifter bore. Torque the cam bolt to spec and you'll see that. The other one, comp point of confusion, is the incorrect camshaft end play ruined my distributor gear. That's a half truth and we're going to talk a lot about that in this uh, presentation. It, if, if you have advanced distributor drive gear wear, it may have had something to do with end play, especially if you didn't check it and you don't know, but it's probably other issues and we are going to discuss them specifically. Okay, let's get into distributor gear where now excessive camshaft end play, uh, can it cause distributor gear wear? Of course, it, it excessive end play is going to cause irregular wear on the distributor gear. Let's talk about the Ford gears. Fords are already sensitive to distributor gear placement on the shaft. The placement of the gear has very little plus or minus allowable end play on the shaft or margin. We'll see that on the next page. So what you often get is you can get one or more combined factors that's going to cause premature distributor gear failure. You're either going to have excessive camshaft end play or you're going to have improper gear placement on the shaft or you're going to have a high volume oil pump and we're going to talk about high volume oil pumps so you can have a combina combination of these factors or all of them and then you have advanced gear wear now let's let's focus on taylor here for a second i i've seen this on the blogosphere many times people will have a gear failure, a distributor gear failure, or maybe even a camshaft gear failure or both. And they'll, they'll say, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm just going to go back to the, I'm going to find a Ford Motorsport alphabet cam. I'm going to go find me an old B303 and I'm going to get a steel gear for my uh, distributor drive shaft and I'm done. Uh, all this new stuff is junk. So that's not correct. And the people who do that are not examining why they had a distributor drive shaft gear failure. So let's not be confused about that. Uh, on that point, a lot of people are like, you know what, nuclear option, bronze gear, I'm just going to spend the money. <laughs> They're not that expensive. Now, if you do a blogosphere check, you'll see a lot of people who, who think the bronze gear is the solution. That's what my grandpappy did. No, nope. You've, the blogosphere has hundreds, if not thousands of bronze gear failures because the reason that the gear wore out was not addressed. So don't, don't get out your credit card, go to Summit Racing, say I'm going to get the bronze gear and not have to deal with this. Uh, even the Ford Performance Part Instructions, which is linked in the uh, intro, does have a warning about bronze gears. Now, why are bronze gears out there? Yes, they've been out there for a long time. They're really race car gears with, with special types of alloys on the camshafts, and they're temporary use items, and the race car guys that actually used them, they knew that you had to check them frequently and then replace them frequently. So they're not really a streetcar gear. Sorry, some somebody's gonna say, well, I've been using them for years, never had a problem. Well, good for you. Okay, so uh, let's talk about how we prevent distributor gear wear. So uh, we've got a combination of the following that usually cause distributor drive shaft gear wear. Uh, high volume oil pump, we're gonna have a specific slide on that. The end play, which we mentioned now here, I mentioned the gear placement on the shaft. You, you can see in the intro where I've linked these instructions. This is pretty precise. You've got to get 
this uh, gear in exactly the right place. So kind of the local yokel machinist might be might not be able to get this exactly right. I have uh, I have a distributor made by uh, Davis Unified Ignition or Performance Distributors. Those guys know exactly where to put the gear. So you gotta you gotta find a machinist that can follow instructions or a distributor manufacturer that's going to put the gear on in the exact right place, or you're going to have something like this. Now, uh, about gear material, uh, I touched on that on the previous slide, especially with my rant about the bronze gear, but most people nowadays, I think, are using comp cams, and you've really got to use the proper gear material selection, and if you do that, you're probably not going to have a problem assuming you you get the, the placement correct in the end place right here's an interesting alternate method in the Ford instructors instructions which I am going to do and I won't read it word for word but they've kind of got this pull-up procedure thing they call it an alternate method but basically what we should do is do both get the gear placement correct and check this so that's kind of interesting Okay, so this may be the only real helpful slide in this big old rant. So comp cams. Comp cams is not the steel billet cam like Ford had with the alphabet cams. So a lot of people look at that and go, comp cams ripped us off. It, okay, I, I'm not going to defend comp cams on why they didn't build them of the exact same material Ford did, but they don't. So in the intro... There is a linked article here. I've got an excerpt that talks about what comp cam hydraulic rollers are made out of. They're made out of this Addy material. The article's pretty good. Check it out. So for these Addy materials, comp cams recognize a melanized distributor dry gear. I've talked to performance distributors. They also recommend, recommend a melanized distributor drive gear when using an Addy type camshaft. You do not want to use an old school five liter uh, steel distributor gear with an Addy material camshaft. You're probably going to wreck the cam gear. So uh, one thing you might notice here is I picked up in this article is these comp cam Addy cams have a dash eight at the end. So I'm using this cam here and look what we've got here. This is the Dash 8. So that's this Addy type cam. And by the way, when I talked to performance distributors, they knew all about this. So here are, this is right off the Comp Cams website. They, a lot of people sell melanized distributor gears. I don't think Comp makes them. I think they buy them. So they've got some words here to describe uh, the benefits of those. So if you've got a Comp Cam, Addy, a cam and you want to minimize risk of uh, camshaft gear or distributor drive shaft gear failure use a melanized gear like like I am and I think you're gonna be okay okay let's talk about my uh, favorite blogosphere internet and magazine part all the way back to high school because I drank the Kool-Aid too. Gotta have the high volume oil pump, right? It's a high performance machine. So come on, we've all been doing this and not really knowing why we're buying it. Uh, so the reality is most street strip engines with normal bearing clearances have no need for a high volume oil pump. Do enough research and you'll find somebody who was a little tight on the bearing clearances ran a high volume oil pump and spun a bearing. So let's let's not just lend ourselves to uh, opinions here. Let's I've got some excerpts here from three sources. Even Ford in the linked instructions have a warning about running a high volume oil pump production bearing clearances and they're talking about premature distributor gear wear. So that's from Ford. I've mentioned performance distributors on their tech page. They specifically call out excessive distributor gear wear on Ford. I remember talking to the guy at Performance Distributors when uh, I was having my uh, 351 distributor made. And we were talking about comp cams and the Addy material and the melanized gear. And, and he mentioned this. He goes, you're not using a high volume oil pump, are you? And I went, no, sir, I am not. So uh, that's the second source, Engine Builder Magazine. Similar, high volume or high pressure oil pumps. We don't recommend the use of these types of oil pumps. 
shorten the life of the cam and the distributor gears. I think this high volume oil pump has just been a go-to part. It's not really necessary unless you really need it. And I, the, the focus of this presentation does not discuss when you really need it. Okay, the excessive camshaft end plate, what are the effects? So the worst case, and I don't think we see this a lot. This is probably a gross error, so we'll just touch on it. The lifter is no longer centered on the camshaft lobe and causes the side of the lobe to contact an adjacent lifter. Okay, that's going to trash things. So what's more typical? Excessive end plate will cause advanced wear in the camshaft distributor because the mesh interface is pressured from the excessive thrust and play in one direction. For a hydraulic roar, that would be forward. And that thrust plate wear is also accelerated. Uh, you can see in the linked instructions, there's some technical articles. I found this interesting. Excessive end play will also result in erratic timing and it'll be retarded as the camshaft thrust forward. So you got some old muscle car engine and you're dry racing and it starts falling down as uh, you're accelerating, maybe that's something to think about. What are the solutions? If you have too much end play, too much thrust clearance, it may be the following. I just kind of mentioned uh, the worn out drag race engine. You may just have worn out parts and you just replace them. Or you have an incompatible thrust plate camshaft sprocket. So some people mix parts from different kits. They like these special thrust plates that they see on the internet blogosphere, and they think that's gonna free up some horsepower, so they spend their money on that. So Comp Cams has a solution for that. They've got these camshaft thrust bearing wear plates. And I think they're pretty cool. I've got these linked, so if you got too much end play, and you think you can get it out with these, uh, check them out. They're basically shims of various thickness. So check those out and that may be able to solve your problem for excessive. Okay, let's talk about insufficient end play, the effects and solution. So the worst case insufficient thrust is gonna be obvious. You're gonna get that with some binding or drag indication when you assemble the engine. So the thing to do is, this is what I did is, Get the camshaft, the thrust plate, the sprocket, and the centric. Don't attach the chain. Get that all torqued up. Torque the camshaft bolt to spec and see if you've got any obvious binding or dragging. That's prior to even doing the clearance check. So that's an easy thing to do. So I think more, what's more typical is uh, you get a low end thrust clearance problem, which means you're on the low end of the range, you're off a couple thousands. So what are the effects? That's gonna increase the mesh pressure on the camshaft distributor drive gears. Because the gears don't have the ability to mesh uniformly, and you're going to get some accelerated wear there. So how do you get more clearance? You take the thrust plate and do some flat lap sanding. Now, this is not a new and novel approach. This is all over the blogosphere. I think there's a couple YouTube videos on it. Now, you'll see the blogosphere say, uh, oh, do it on a piece of glass. Okay. What they mean is do it on something that's known to be flat, a flat plate such as a metal workbench. Tape the sandpaper to flat surface. Typically, you're only remo removing a few thou. So use 600 grit wet sandpaper. Keep it wet. Uh, you might think 600 grit. I don't want to do this for, for 12 hours. You'd be surprised if you're only taking off a couple thou and you have a cast iron thrust plate. The 600 grit will work quickly. So check progress frequently. Uh, as I mentioned, it'll remove material fairly quickly. If you want to finish up with 800,000 to get ultra smooth, you go ahead and do that. Now, this procedure here assumes you're only taking up a couple thou because you don't you, you don't have incompatible parts. So it's not a substitute for unmatched components. So let's continue. Okay, let's talk about incompatible assemblies. So <clears throat> for us Ford guys, this is kind of a point of interest. I won't go through this word for word. So the early Ford guys, uh, because Ford going back and forth with things, uh, they often will complain about this incompatible assembly. So this is kind of a point of interest. So you get either this, you get a gross end play issue, like zero end play jamming 
or massive M play. So like I said, I, I, I'm not, I won't go through this word for word, but you can see this change level seven and the spacer. I do have this article linked in the intro screen. So if this is your problem and you stumbled across this video, just go look at that intro screen and this will take you directly to the article and uh, some blogosphere references on the same subject, which you need to read at your own risk. Here's some more pictures. I just put this in there because I thought this was kind of cool for the old school guys. So you can see the spacer there. This one's not using the spacer. Okay. More notes on early forward configuration. Won't read this word for word. If you're interested, you can read this. Okay, end play check procedure. You, you, you saw me talk about it in the video. I won't go through it word for word. I will say you don't install any valve train components, especially not the lifters. You don't install the distributor. If somebody can find a forward end play check procedure that says to install the distributor, I'd like to see that. Put it. Leave a comment. Uh, make sure to torque the camshaft bolt to spec. Uh, don't just do it hand tight. You need to get all that stuff sucked up. The rest of the procedure is fairly straightforward. You know, the end play acceptable range, uh, it varies depending on your source. Uh, my uh, uh, 351 uh, Windsor rebuild manual actually doesn't talk about it at all. It's not in there. So I had to poke around. Uh, I see ranges that between three and eight seems to be ac acceptable. I think I said four and eight in the video. Comp cams says five to 0 0.01. Now, comp cams, people familiar with comp cams know that their installation instructions are universal. They're kind of generic, whether it's flat tappet or hydraulic roller. It's not that they're bad, but they're kind of generic. I do have that linked in the intro screen if you're interested. Okay, uh, thank God, we're almost done. So recommendations, don't, don't use old and worn out parts. There's really no excuse to do that. So uh, unless you're doing some conquerors correct thing and you can't get the stuff, just replace the stuff. Uh, use camshaft sprocket strut plate and thrust plates from the same manufacturer. You know, don't mix and match components. Uh, if you're using the Addy material cam, such like a comp, use the melanized distributor gear. Uh, get the drive gear in the right place on the shaft. Uh, don't use a high volume oil pump unless you have a specific application that requires one. Now, You'll see people say this. I've always used high volume oil pumps, never had a problem. You know this, I've never had a problem. That statement is a plague on the blogosphere. Somebody's trying to have a scientific technical discussion and some Weisenheimer is going to say, well, I never had a problem. And that's like a mic drop statement. And the first guy who says, well, I never had a problem is the first guy I'm going to ignore. I think the bottom line on the high volume oil pump is if you don't know why you need a high volume oil pump, then you probably don't need a high volume oil pump. Okay, thanks for listening and uh, more to follow. Take care.